Hello. Hello, Coach. Hey, how are you uh, doing? We're pleased, pleased to be joined by Norfolk State Head Coach Robert Jones. Uh, media members, thank you for joining us today as well. Um, I'd remind you, if you have a question, please use the raise hand function to indicate uh, that you have a question. Uh, when called upon, please identify yourself first by name and affiliation, and then ask your question. Um, Coach, thank you again for joining us. I'd ask you to please lean into the mic microphone as you answer so we can all hear you well okay. and, and if you could just start us off with uh, some opening thoughts on tonight's game well tonight was obviously a tough game um, you know for many reasons one uh, opponent was was top notch you know clearly the best in the country but two I think that we let the moment get away from us a little bit uh, we put the pressure on ourselves instead of the pressure being on them because honestly it was no pressure on us but we played that way um, especially after the first media well even within the first media but we were fortunate enough to be up but, um, you know, we, we, we put too much pressure on ourselves. We didn't play Norfolk State basketball today. We haven't played the way that we've been playing against 17 wins this year. Um, you know, I told him at halftime I wasn't quite sure what team this was out there. But once again, credit to Gonzaga. They're a very quality opponent. They did some great things. They, you know, they shared the ball. 27 assists is amazing. They do some great things. But um, I'm more disappointed about us not coming out with the effort that we needed to come out with. Not really disappointed about the actual points things like that. But if we came up with a better effort, that would have took care of some of the some of the other stuff. OK, we'll take questions. We'll go first to Adam Winkler. Adam, if you could unmute yourself, uh, identify yourself, and then ask your question. Adam Winkler with WTKR TV out of Norfolk. Coach, even with the, the outcome no longer in doubt there at the end, there was some emotion still on the bench. What were those final moments like? And what was the message to the to the squad? Uh, it was tough, a uh, tough final moments, obviously. Um, no one expected to come out here and lose by 40 points, no matter, you know, what the opponent was. That's just not our DNA. Um, and we were, we were very upset about that. But at the same time, I brought the captains in, or, well, most of the seniors, I should say, not even the captains, and just told them that it's going to be okay. And I told them no tears out here because you should lift your heads up because you've done something that no other team in Norfolk State history in 23 years of Division One has done, and that's to win a regular season title and a tournament title in the same year. You know, this year, obviously, we played in divisions, but we still were, were co-champs. So to do that, you could walk out of here with your head high because it took 23 years for this to happen. Um, like I said, that you could hurt about the – about the uh, the points and total and things like that, but you can walk out of here with your head high because you've done something that's never been done in Norfolk State history. We'll go next to Brian Smith. Brian, you can unmute yourself. Coach, was it uh, you know you don't you know as, as with anything you never let your players back down or anything, but were there times that it, it, Gonzaga looked overwhelming at times? Did it almost look like that in person? Yeah, because of the way we were playing, honestly, you know, and, you know, not taking anything away from Gonzaga, obviously they're a great program, they're number one, number one team in the country for a reason, right? But also us, we didn't give a good showing of Norfolk State basketball tonight. Uh, we played with way more intensity. Um, you know, we came into the game 17th in the country with field goal percentage defense. We didn't play a lick of it tonight. Um, and like I said, we just, we shifted the pressure from Gonzaga to us. I mean, Gonzaga's supposed to be playing a national championship. We're not supposed to even be here in a sense because people thought that we were going to lose the Central. We won that game. People thought we were going to lose the Morgan. We won that game. We were the underdog against Appalachian State. We won that game. So I don't understand why we put so much pressure on us. I know everybody wants to get the big upset win and that one shining moment and all that, that jazz, but we put way too much pressure on ourselves and didn't play the right way. Our next question from James Hill. James, if you could unmute yourself, identify yourself, and ask your question. Yeah, Coach, uh, James Hill with BNC Sports. When you look at the overall picture, uh, it's a beautiful thing in terms of the direction you're taking this program in. Can you speak to that when we look at HBCU basketball and NCAA men's basketball, period, overall? I mean, it's, you know, we didn't have the best showing tonight, obviously, clearly. <laughs> but, um, you know, with us having a, a you know a quality non-conference wins, we show we could compete with anybody, you know, mid-major in the country. Um, you know, with us having a, a winning a championship and having a, you know 17 wins in this pandemic, um, just showed the the DNA of our of our program. And like I told the guys, you know, there's a lot of people who play basketball who are really good basketball players that never made an NCAA tournament um, ever. You know, there's a lot of good coaches out there assistant and head coaches that have never coached in the NCAA tournament, let alone get a win, 
you know, in a tournament game, you know, whether it's first four, final four, middle four, you got a, a, a NCAA tournament win. And, and, and my coaches and my players should be proud of that because, like I said, there's millions of people who, have played, who coach the game of basketball and millions of people who play the game of basketball. And we're one of the fortunate few to get, um, you know, NCAA tournament uh, win. Our next question to Adam Winkler. Adam, you can unmute yourself. Coach, we know what kind of competitor you are, and we can see the emotion in you that you're you're a little miffed that you guys didn't <laughs> didn't put on the show that you wanted to. How long do you think it'll take for you to step back and realize the run that you guys made, the fact that you're the only program from Virginia to win a tournament game this year? Will you be able to do that, or is this bad taste gonna gonna linger too long? No, it's gonna it's gonna linger tonight. Um, you know. Probably linger tomorrow. Probably linger throughout the week, you know the rest of the weekend, but because um, just like the competitor that I am, you know, on a national stage, of course you wanna, you wanna win, you know, every game that you can play, but at the same time, you know, I have to, I have to tell myself the same thing I told the team, you know, about the stuff that I just said about, you know, from a coaching standpoint, from, you know, being able to get an NCAA tournament win. There's a lot of people that get to the tournament and things like that, and 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 have never got a win in the NCAA tournament. So to get a win, you know, is is, is a great feat. Um, I think we're moving the needle. We're moving the, the, the program in the right direction. You, you, you figure two out of the last three years, we've won the regular season title. So that's moving in the right direction because before that, it was only one regular season title in the whole history of the school. Um, now we're back to the NCAA tournament. So the needle is being moved in the right way. And I just told the players that they should, uh, the ones that are coming back, you know, that still have eligibility and things like that, or the ones that choose to come back, I should say, is um, – you know, know that you're going in the right direction. And now, since you tasted this, you should want to taste it every year. Our next question to uh, Brian Smith. Brian, if you could identify yourself and ask your question. Brian Smith with 13 News Now in Norfolk, Virginia. Coach, um, what type of attention do you want for those kids who may have never had heard about this program or had kind of heard about it do you think that you're going to see more because of you on the national stage of maybe considering Norfolk State now? Do you think how important is something like that given your run this year? I mean, I don't know after this game, honey, but, but, <laughs> but, but, but in general, I think that even after the Appalachian State game, even after Selection Sunday, we started getting more inquiries about Norfolk State uh, basketball from really good players. I think even as the, you know, everything was going on with the social injustice and, and things like that, we started to get more inquiries, you know, of, of better players, honestly, that, that were interested in Norfolk State basketball because of what we can do. And now I think that's, this is another step in that to show that, um, you know, you can come to HBCU and you can win a game in a tournament. You know, you can compete on a national stage. And, and, and you know, a lot of other places, you, you know, haven't done that. So uh, it just shows that you can go anywhere and compete on this stage. And, and hopefully people see that and, um, you know, will still have their interest in Norfolk State basketball. Our, our next question back to uh, James Hill. Coach, uh, from a personal standpoint, what, what's it been like uh, this weekend in Indiana uh, competing at the highest level? Uh, from a coaching standpoint, what's it been like for you personally? Uh, like I told the guys before, and I told them even before this tournament, you know, even reflected on the 2012 moment, was that the NCAA tournament outside of my son being born is probably one of the biggest highlights, uh, you know, that I've said, you know, I could always remember. And and, and this is going to be the same thing, you know, me coming back as a as a head coach and, and not just, a, you know, assistant coach um, to get an NCAA tournament win, um, something I'm going to relish forever until until maybe the next one happens, you know. And, um, you know, it's just something that I'm, I'm going to always think about. I mean, this group of guys is a, guy, is a group of guys that I'm always going to remember. Um, I think you always remember your championship groups, right? So I think that, you know, this is a special group, and I'm always going to remember this group. And, you know, whatever these guys need, they can they can count on me to, to give it to them. Our next question back to Adam Winkler. Adam? Yeah, wait, wait, okay, two questions. Adam and Brian, well, that's what happens when you lose. Right, two people ask questions. <laughs> the other day, I had 40 people ask questions. <laughs> hey, we're, we're, we're here for the highs and the lows, Coach. That's right, that's right, that's uh, right. <laughs> and out, and and – and because of that, I know you won't hate me for asking this one. Um, there are obviously uh, rumors about you and, and your future and other jobs. Uh, can you tell us about your commitment to Norfolk State and, and maybe what your future holds, Coach? I mean, my commitment to Norfolk State is I'm, I'm the Norfolk State men's basketball coach. Um, 
you know, I think uh, my AD and my president, you know, are, are interested in making sure that um, I stay at Norfolk State. So, um, you know, as far as any other rumors about jobs or anything like that, um, as of right now, they're just rumors about stuff. Um, and I think, like I said, my, my AD and my president are committed to having me at, at Norfolk State. And, and once we get back, we'll talk about um, some things. But I'm committed to being at Norfolk State, too. I think that, um, you know, I think that we could do some special things here, um, you know, and, and it, it shows, you know, we just got to just tweak a couple things and, and just get, try to get back to this point and, and go further. And our next question from David Hall. David, if you could uh, unmute yourself, identify yourself, and ask your question. Yes, David Hall with the Virginian Pilot in North. Um, Rob, what what can your players learn from playing a team that good and seeing how they execute? I mean, what I told the guys was that every time we're in the weight room and we're telling you to go a little harder, it's because of that, you know, because of those physical teams that, that are out there in the country. And Gonzaga, I mean, all those guys were obviously clearly hit the weight room, right? So, you know, the times that we tell you got to be a little bit more disciplined defensively, a little bit more disciplined offensively, cut harder, you know, screen harder, is because of this moment, you know. Maybe in conference, maybe, you know, through non-conference, you could get away with some of that stuff. But once you get to the pinnacle, you have to do everything the right way to win a basketball game. And I think that hopefully those guys will be able to take that on a little bit um, going forward about what you need to do to really be the best team in the country, which Gonzaga is. So, um, you know, hopefully everyone sees that. Coach Jones, thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get out of here on that one. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, we'll be joined momentarily by Kianze Chavis, media members. If you could please use this time to either raise or lower your hand as necessary. Kianze, thank you for joining us uh, this evening. We appreciate it. Um, I'd ask you, uh, as, as you take questions, if you could please lean into the microphone so we can all hear you well. That would be fantastic. Um, we'll go to uh, questions first, starting with... Uh, Brian Smith, Brian, if you could unmute yourself, identify yourself, and ask your question. Brian Smith with 13 News Now in Norfolk, Virginia. Kianze, um, heck of a season. Um, what did you see out there? Was it everything that you saw in the scouting report? And then all of a sudden, what's the difference between seeing it and then actually playing against it? Um, yeah, like I was just telling my coach, uh, the game speed was like, a thousand miles per hour. They were moving a lot. The ball was moving and never stick. They're a pretty good coach team. They do everything right. Limited mistakes. And it, it was just a reality when you got out there in the court. It was just playing against a bunch of pros, actually. <laughs> Our next question from David Hall. David, if you could identify yourself and ask your question. Yep, David Hall with the uh, Virginia Pilot in Norfolk. Um, Keonze, were, were you guys, you didn't, it didn't seem like you were overwhelmed. I mean, you were leading seven minutes into the game. What happened? They scored 12 straight points at that point. What what went wrong? Uh, we just started to play a little stagnant, got ahead of ourselves, stopped playing where, like, how what got us here. We, we weren't playing as a team anymore. It was a little one-on-one. -on -one. Things started moving slow, and they were just hitting shots. We weren't the defensive team we usually were. As Coach was saying, we, we usually play – we're the number 17 team in the country for defense percentage, and we didn't show that tonight. So that's what happened. Our next question to James Hill. James, if you could identify yourself and ask your question. Keonze, congratulations on a successful season. Bless you. This is Thank James you. Hill with BNC Sports. Um, talk about what this particular season means to you personally and for the rest of your life, you know that you made it to the uh, March Madness, to the dance, and you guys played it against one of the greatest teams in the country, um, the number one team. Uh, take us to, to your thought process. Well, the experience was great. We're, uh, like Coach said, we're one out of 30 people in NSU history that ever played in the tournament, yet even won a game. So to be here with the guys today, it was just a great experience. Coming from where I come from, I started off as a walk-on. And then I got the scholarship and became a starter and a key part of the team. And it's just a great experience to be a part of this. We'll go next to Adam Winkler. Adam, if you could identify yourself and ask your question. Adam Winkler with WTKR-TV out of Norfolk. Uh, 
Gonzaga caught a moment on the sideline there late with uh, you and Coach and Carter. Uh, looked like he was doing a little bit of coaching up, but then it ended pretty emotionally with a couple of hugs. Do you mind sharing what that, uh, what that message in that moment was like? He was just letting me and Devontae know, like, we wouldn't have been to this point without us. And to hold our heads high and walk out of here as men because we accomplished something that no one else has accomplished this year or in the past 23 years in Norfolk State history for Division One, besides one other team. So he's just telling us to keep our heads high and know that we were key to this year's success. If there are other questions for Kianze, please use the raise hand function. And we will go back to Adam Winkler. Adam Winkler with WTKR in Norfolk. Kianze, I want to ask you about Coach specifically. Um, he's achieved a bunch of goals uh, in green and gold, and we could tell how much this tournament run means to him. There's also reports that other bigger programs are considering him. Can you just speak to him as a coach, what he's meant to you and uh, what he's meant to this program? As a coach, he, he's actually made me better as a man outside of basketball because he gives life lessons all around, all year round. It's, it's more than basketball. He wants you to become a great young man and be able to live in, that, live in this world doing something besides playing basketball if that, if that isn't the route for you. So his success, his, him leading me to his success was just an honor. And I know he'll go on to do great things because he's a great guy. And much respect to him. We'll go next to uh, David Hall. David, if you could identify yourself and ask your question. Yep, uh, David Hall with Virginia Pilot in Norfolk. Uh, Keanze, I know they're not, uh, you guys weren't here to look for more victories, but uh, you look at the box score, you scored in double figures against the number one team in the country. <laughs> how, how do you think you'll, you'll think about that in 10 or 20 years? Well, that's a great story to tell my kids, future friends and all, like, just to play being on this stage was just amazing and even to score 10 double digit figures against them which they're a pretty great defensive team it's just an honor <laughs> actually it just feels amazing okay and then we'll go back to uh brian smith brian if you could unmute yourself uh Keonze, brian smith with 13 news now in norfolk um i asked coach this i'll ask you this with a game you Two, you guys had two games to play in the tournament, so you've got more eyes watching your program. What do you tell a potential recruit who might have not thought about Norfolk State but now might consider it? What do you tell them about coming to this school? Uh, as I would say, Norfolk State isn't for everyone. Just because you see the success, we put in a lot of work behind closed doors. We do a lot of things that the high-level schools do that people don't notice. With limited resources we have, we try to be the best team possible, and Coach always tries to go above and beyond to make us just as good and try to give us the resources as the high majors. So coming, trying to come to New Norfolk State, yeah, is glitter and gold. You're going to get rings if you work, but it's a lot of work you have to put in. <laughs> okay, last call on questions for Kianze. If there are any other questions, you can use the raise hand feature now. If not, Kianze, we'll let you get out of here. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. That's it for tonight's post-game news conference. A transcript of the interview will be provided by 